All right, so this is going to be a very quick video previewing the Tour de France stages and then what we can expect from the overall GC contenders. So the first three stages in Denmark, time trial opening day, 16 kilometers. Time gap's not going to be huge just because it's an opening day. So the difference between people, if they're feeling all fresh, shouldn't be too big. Um, expect Ghana to win. Expect Pagaccio, Roglic, Thomas, etc. to do well. Expect some of the smaller climbers like Gaudu to do worse. Um, alongside Yates and Martinez. Both of them not terrible time trials, but will lose some time. Next two stages, cross windy, open. Uh, I think it's stage two with the 12 kilometer bridge. Apparently it's a headwind at the moment. That could cause chaos. Again, could be some GC action, but mainly just going to be sprints in Norway. Um, I do expect the there to be some wind. I don't know if it will split. Uh, first stage in France, Dunkirk to Calais, uh, will be a sprint. The last climb, 1k, 7% with like 20, 20k to go. That's not really going to do much, to be honest. Uh, and then the next one, this is a big one, Lille to Arenberg, Port de Hano. Look how many cobbles there are. This is going to be a very important stage, even more so if it rains. I think if it doesn't rain, the gaps will only be mainly due to punctures. I can't see too many GC guys going too aggressive. That's generally been what happens in the cobbles. If you think back to when Den caught one in like 2018, I think it was. Um, when Den got one, the GC guys were basically, even Bardé punctured three times, still finished from group. So with the GC guys, so it was um, maybe not too much um, chaos for GC, but if it rains, it could be chaos and also people might attack. It will be interesting to see how it goes um, for sure. Uh, next stage, long wean, nothing GC wise, just like nice uphill finish. Um, super planche to Belfi. Uh, I think it's an overrated climb. I think not, not as much happens in GC. Basically, it's really steep, but there's the downhill just before the finish. So it's normally going to be a bunch sprint. Obviously, Arrow did win solo, but shouldn't be too many time gaps at early doors. It might shape the yellow jersey a little bit. If Ganner's in the lead, for instance, at that point um, and survives over the cobbles, then, you know, he'll probably lose it there. Now we're getting more into Switzerland. Uh, well, sorry, we are getting into Switzerland, which is Dol de Lausanne. Um, it's an interesting finish, 4K, 4.6K, 4%. You know, you'd probably say it's going to be a break, but with Van der Poel and Wout van Aert there, they may control. Um, the climb to Chatel from Engel to Chatel. Um, you know, there's some decent climbs here. This will be one for the break. 15K at 6%, downhill, uphill finish. Has break written all over it. Uh, and then we've got a rest day. Then we go Morzine to Mejev, which is basically just a circle. Um, they're right next to each other. This one is going to be for the break. It's the weirdest climb ever. The Monte de Altibort Mejev, 19K at 4%. Kilometer, 4% like nothing's going to happen. It'll be a break. Almost all like if Sonny Corbrelli was there, it, it could be control for someone like Sonny versus Wout versus Matthew van der Poel. Honestly, it, it, they could get up that. It's not that hard of a climb. But the next two stages are big. So we've got Albertville to Col de Granon. This suits if Miguel Angel Lopez was going him. Basically, high altitude. I think Danny Martinez will probably win this stage. Goes up to the Galibier. Also from the harder side, they do Mont Vernier, um, Col de Telegraph, which isn't that hard. And then Galibier, it's not that hard until about 2,000 metres, but the last 600 metres of ascent is hard. Col de Granon, I've also done. It's a pretty rough climb. 11k, 9%, 2,400 metres. You know, as soon as it goes over 2,000 metres, the Colombians have a big advantage. So maybe neither man could have a good result as well. But, but Danny Martinez on them too. Now we've got basically reverse stage, Briançon to Altuez. So they go the other side of the Gilbert. That's far easier. The first part up the low terrain is like 3%, but then it's like 6K, which is hard. Probably not going to be too decisive. Colola quite a fair. Again, there's hard parts, but it, it only really gets hard towards the end. And then Altuez. I think now there won't be big gaps in Altuez. I think Roglic, Pogaccio will probably mark each other. Um, it'll just be interesting to see how G gets on and the like. Um, but yeah, I think it'll be a good stage, but I think Granon should be the more decisive stage. But then it is the stage after, so that is hard. This one, classic transition stage, 200k almost. Bourdois on to Saint-Étienne, one for the break. Sprinters, I don't think, are going to want to do anything. It's almost hard, too hard, like 5.3k at 7%. I think it will be one for the breakaway. This stage again, 2.5k at 11%. It's hard to say who it really suits. It could be a break stage. It could be brought back for GC action. I think that will be definitely interesting. And Road to Carcassonne. Um, I haven't seen the map for this, but this could also have some crosswinds. Sometimes they do when it's on the south coast of France. Um, then we're getting more into the Pyrenees, the Mieux de Perguier. They did in 2019 uh, when Agam Bernal won. This is like a classic, a good stage. I think it could be one for their ambush, potentially. I think it'll be pretty exciting to see what happens. Uh, what next one? Sagan to Perigude again. Uh, the, sorry, Perigude is a different climb. 
Uh, Cold Ass Man, not too hard again. Uh, Orquette d'Anquisant, that is also not too hard either. It's got some downhills. Cold Laval, Laurent Azé, and Perigude. It's a decent combination. It's nothing too crazy. Um, I think not, I wouldn't predict mad GC action, not altitude. None of the climbs really too steep either, so probably not. This one, Lure to Altacamp, that's quite a big day out. Uh, Obisk is a big one. Um, Spandau and Otakam all together that is going to be a decent stage I think there should be some gaps next one is a transition stage um, and then there's a time trial where is the time trial ah this is the time trial isn't it so yeah this is the the TT I believe 40 kilometers this will have the biggest gaps um, out of all of them this is real who wins it I think it will be carnage in the in the Pyrenees stages potentially but I think the outs are harder, and I think them having it that way around might negate the race. If it's already decided, people won't be able to get as much gaps in the Pyrenees as expected. So overall predictions, who do we think is going to win? Well, I think it'll be the Battle of the Slovenians, Gary Thomas. I think it'll be up there. I think the first week suits him. None of the climbs are, except the Granon are crazy. Um, none of them are super, super steep. Altitude is okay at. He's got Martinez and Yates to help him if they fall down on GC. Um, I think he'll do well, and I obviously think Vingegaard will do well. Niederman, I don't think has a chance. Too much TT kilometers, um, and then basically no, there's no other people going for it really. If we if we look at the star list here, it's surprising. As you deserve, okay, yeah, for sure. Ben O'Connor will get top ten, but he won't be going for the win. Um, Lutschenko again, top ten, not going for the win. Jack Haig, top ten, not going for the win. Like there's not many people who can really go for the win. Vlasov again, top ten, won't be going for the win. Um, so yeah, that's my general conclusion. Same with FTJ, like they got some strong guys like Gaudu and Stora, but they're just not good enough. Um, the Ineos have a strong team, but no one's that good. It just is like the Slovenians are just a level above. Um, and then we've got some sprinters and the like. Bardet's good, but again, he's just not competing, especially with so many time trial competitors. But anyway, those are my thoughts. Let me know how you think the Tour de France will play out and what stages you're most looking forward to watching. And I'll see you in the next one.